we're now going to talk about our maximum symmetrical output voltage swing. And this is basically related to where our cue point is positioned on the load line. Ideally, we would like this cue point to be in the center of our saturation region, such that it's equally far from transitioning into our non-saturation and our cutoff regions. And so that's a little bit hard to sort of wrap your head around without looking at a load line. So in order to help us visualize that a little better, let's consider the circuit from the previous couple of videos. And so I've sort of started our drawing here with our load line. So our blue curve is our load line. We see in general, we have our ID, our drain current, plotted against our drain to source voltage. And our load line is coming from our KVL around the drain to source loop. So for the simple circuit we had in the previous video, we see our endpoint over here comes from VDD over RD. So that was 3.3 over 10K. So we get a value of 0.33 milliamps. And on this end, we have our VDD value for the maximum drain to source voltage, which gives us 3.3 volts. And so we just connect those two linearly and that gives us our load line. So we had also found our Q point was at our, an operating current of 0.174 for our drain current and 1.56 for our drain to source voltage. So we can add a couple things here of interest. So let's go ahead and add our VDS SAT curve. And so remember our VDS SAT curve is going to depend on our, our gate to source voltage. So it looks something like this. So this would be our VDS SAT. And so remember, if we're on the left side of that VDS SAT curve, we're going to be in our non-saturation region. And if we're on the right side, we're going to be in the saturation region. And so for linear amplification, we've said we want to be in the saturation region. We can see our Q point is in the saturation region. So in that case, uh, it, well, in terms of that, we are good, but we could be a little better. And so let's talk about how exactly we could improve this. So let's first point out that for this particular load line, our transition point between saturation and non-saturation is indicated by that green dot there. So that's going to be our transition point between saturation and non-saturation. We also have another transition point, which is down here. And if we get to this point down here, our device would be in cutoff. So we would have zero drain current. So what we can see is that ideally we would like our Q point to be in the middle of this saturation region. And let's take a closer look at sort of the distances between these two points and how much we can vary this before we move the device out of saturation and therefore we no longer have linear amplification. So of course we have this much distance to move on our load line before we go into the non-saturation mode. And so that's gonna to correspond to some current over here which is going to be our, let's call it our I sub DT, so our drain current at that transition point. Now, we could also move an equal distance over here, so we're talking about, and so let me make that maybe a little bit closer to the first one. Um, so we're talking, of course, about some sinusoidal signal, so we have some signal that's superimposed that's making our drain current vary like this, and so it's limited as far as how much we can move up that load line based on how close we are to that transition point. And so we, some, we have some equal distance that we can go above and below our IDQ in that case. So this lower value would be our IDQ minus this distance up here, which would be our IDT minus IDQ. So we have some region indicated by these curly brackets here where we can operate before we go into non-saturation in this case. And so of course that's not ideal because we're, we're really being limited by this small distance here, whereas we have all this sort of free space we can think about it that we could have gone before moving to cutoff, but we're limited by the other side in transition into non-saturation. So ideally we would like to move this Q point somewhere here where we could move a little bit more freely on either side. Now, something to keep in mind on top of that though, is ultimately re remember that any AC signal that is superimposed on top of this, so again, we have some AC signal coming in here, we have to have a small signal. So that has to be quote unquote, a small signal. So at some point, you know, even if we have our cue point right here, 
once we get some really large, you know, relatively large input signal, we're not going to have that this small signal approximation is true, and ultimately we're going to have nonlinear effects anyway. So something to sort of keep in mind as you're thinking about this maximum symmetrical output voltage swing. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have enough time to look at a full example with this, but let me direct you to a good example in the textbook. So example 4.4, which is on page 220 of the textbook, is a good design problem where the ultimate goal is to put the cue point more in the middle of the saturation region as we see here on this load line. 